guy walks in at 40 minutes after a 45, I'm coming over here to your lecture, Jack, and walks in 40 minutes after a 45 minute lecture. Give me a break. I know it. You're, that's because that thing doesn't work. It only works when you get here on time. Anyway, the point is, you got to take the power around the cone, not in the center, because that's what the patient's looking through for distance. But the next time you refract the keratoconus patient, try that. Hold it right up there, and that guy will be able to read J1 plus print because the bifocal, the power of the cornea through the cone, will allow him to see things at 10 centimeters in front of the eye, and he'll read J1 plus, look off a distance, and see what he does there at 2080. But the point is, you don't want to do the lens calculation based on that because he's not going to be looking through that for distance. Just another little pearl that helps you out with a patient that has a cone. All right. Now let's look at uh, one or two more cases here. Let's look at somebody that's had a standard LASIK. Yesterday, I think I made a mistake on, uh, they had a voting deal in refractive surgery day yesterday, sub day. And uh, I was making some comments and they did a little poll on who was doing standard, uh, wavefront guided, wavefront optimized, and topographic guided. And there was about 22% of the people that were still doing standard LASIK. And I said, you know, I got up there and I told him topographic guided and hadn't gotten to America but it will, because there's some things that it's better than anything else, particularly if you had a decentered ablation zone because you're measuring 14,000 points over that cornea and you can do a better job and the problem was in the cornea in the first place. Wavefront, 250 points, won't get that. But wavefront guided, wavefront optimized and topographic, but there were still 22% of the people out there doing standard LASIK. I said, you shouldn't be here. Well, you know, everybody laughed, but I felt kind of bad because that was one-fifth of the audience out there felt, but they are. You're behind the time. So I'm going to show you why that is, because standard LASIK's not good. All right. OPD. This is the guy six months after surgery of a minus six LASIK. Now, the first thing I want you to look at is hot down here, cold above. You know, all you know is that guy's not going to see very good, right? Because he's got a lot of change in power. We're on a quarter diopter scale. Always look at that scale, all right? Now, let's look at the topography. Look at this. That's the center. Here's the center of the topography. Looks like that ablation zone's decentered superiorly, doesn't it? This is a pseudo decentration. It's from dry eye. What happens is you do LASIK on somebody, you put the flap back down, and this happens routinely. I do uh, what's called a stair test. You need to evaluate tear function before you ever do it. What's happened is it's not descended. Look at the tangential map here. You see that little ring right there? What do you think that is? That's the treatment. That treatment was centered dead on the bullseye. This area right down here that's hot is a result of epithelial hyperplasia from dry eye in the inferior part of the cornea. And what happened is, and it's not uncommon, restasis seems to help that a little bit, but you need to put plugs in somebody or treat them beforehand because if they've got dry eye, they're gonna get epithelial hyperplasia during that healing period in the post-operative period that's gonna ruin their optics. And it's not gonna go away. And so what will happen is it's hard to take the epithelium off. You don't know how much to take and all that. The point is this is not a decentered ablation, but you wouldn't have been able to see that if you didn't look at the instantaneous map. You can't see that anywhere else because it shows you the detail. It shows you actually here's the edge of the flap. Here's the edge of the treatment zone right around here, but it's obscured here because of the epithelial hyperplasia. But you can pick that up. 